Hey, this is Justin again. Thanks for tuning in to another tutorial here on the Demonic Sweaters uh, YouTube channel. Today I've got a cool one for you. This is more Audacity uh, lessons, and basically what I'm going to show you today is how to use Audacity as a full-blown multi-track recorder. And I've mentioned that it can do that in a couple other uh, posts on uh, my channel here, but I finally got around to uh, to having enough time to actually try to put this together. So I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. I'm not gonna get super advanced, but what I am gonna do um, is basically show you how to create a click track first, because that's what we're gonna play our basic tracks along with. And sorry, I keep getting phone calls, cancel that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna create a, a click track and then create a track that basically allows you to snap events to the click track and then I'm going to create a bass track and then uh, I don't think I have my guitar here I think it's at my studio so I might put on a ukulele track or something like that just to uh, give you an example of how you can do this stuff um, so basically the main points that I want to cover is creating a grid because Audacity doesn't have a grid feature like a lot of recording software, but you can actually make one pretty simply in Audacity. Um, and if you don't know what a grid is, it's basically like something that tells the program what tempo uh, you're playing in. So that way editing, if you want to like overdub certain parts and things like that, is much easier uh, when you have a, a grid for things to basically align to. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is first generate a click track. And to do that, we just go to generate and we go to click track. Now here you'll have, you'll see several options. You can do your tempo and I'm just going to leave it at 120 uh, for this tutorial, which is, you know, basic mid tempo um, beats per measure. This is going to be your time signature. So most songs are in four, four. So we're just going to leave that, but you may want to do something like you know more advanced you can change that there seven four uh, or seven eight five four whatever but let's just leave it at four four for now number of measures this is how long like the click track is going to be once we generate it um you know this is going to change depending on how long of a song you want to do so you just have to experiment with that and see how many measures you're going to end up needing if you make it too short you can always copy the click track that you generated and just paste it at the end of the old one but for this one i'm just going to make it 32 which is twice as long as the default and then you have your sounds here ping noise tick i'm just going to leave it at ping because you can hear the difference here if i just hit preview stop that noise i don't know why anybody would use this actually it's not as bad as i thought or it's not as bad as i remembered tick Oh, that's the one I don't like. Yeah, it's like super ear piercing. So, okay, let's just go back to ping and just click OK. And now you see you have a click track here. So the second step, that gives us a click track, but it doesn't really give us a grid for things to stick to if you want to uh, put in loops or things like that or samples. But that is also very easily done in Audacity just by going to Analyze, and then we go to Beat Finder. Just leave this at 65, click OK. Now, <laughs> this looks kind of crazy, but don't worry about it. It's not that crucial to how it look or how it looks isn't that crucial. It's really just the function. And so what all these are, these are basically markers uh, that Audacity created with that beat finder, and the B just means beat. So if we zoom in a little bit, we can see those. And they're right on the clicks. So the reason why we would want this is if like the pointer that you're trying to highlight things you see that little yellow line that appears that only appears on markers and the end of waveforms and things like that but that's how you snap basically you can snap to the rhythm see now that we created markers on all of the clicks so now we have a grid because when you just have the click here this won't snap the cursor won't snap to just the grid like the the click track you need the markers in there so anyway, without explaining that forever, I think you probably understand what I'm talking about. But this just basically gives us a grid to work with. So now let's go ahead and save this. 
save project as. Then I'm going to go into, it doesn't really matter where you save this, but I'll put it in my music. And then Audacity tutorial and multi track. Okay. So now that I have that set up, first thing I'm going to do is record a bass track. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video for a second and record a little bit on my phone so I can show you how I'm doing that. All right, so here's my audio interface, and it's just a uh, Alesis uh, USB interface, and it's plugged into my computer here. And all I'm going to do, I mean, this part I probably didn't need to really show you, but I'm just going to show you anyways. I'm going to plug my bass in to the uh, input of the audio interface. My bass is over here. I can't really do both of this while I'm holding the camera. But I just wanted to show you, um, basically I have this running into my computer. If you were not using a USB audio interface uh, and you were using your built-in interface, uh, which is over there, but I'm, that's how I'm recording uh, the mic for my uh, tutorials. And that's how I can do it and do this at the same time. But I'm getting sidetracked. But anyway, if you were using the built-in interface, you would need some type of adapter that would uh, adapt basically quarter inch, which is this size, to the smaller eighth inch size. Um, but chances are most people can afford a, uh, a USB interface these days. That you can find some pretty cheap ones out there. But if not, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the built-in interface too. They can be a little noisy sometimes, but I have gotten good recordings with the built-in interface before. So whatever you have, just go ahead and use it, hook that up. And uh, let me go back to the Audacity screen and we'll record some bass. All right, so now I have my bass hooked up and we have our click track. So now we need to get a recording level for the bass. So in order to do that, all you have to do is click this little bar. Now, oh, first, actually, before I do that, let's switch this. If you haven't, switch this area here to mono because you're just recording a bass uh, or a single line input. So you don't need stereo or you'll have an extra blank channel in there. Um, also here, this little uh, microphone guy will show you which audio interface you want to use. So if you select that, I'm using my IO4, which I showed you a minute ago. And uh, once you have those selected, then you can just click this little bar here and this will give you your recording input uh, level. And as you can see, my voice is picking up there, but let me play some bass. Okay, so yeah, bass level looks good. Let's go ahead and record a little bit and uh, put it in with this click track. Okay, so now we have that. Let's go ahead and listen to it back. All right. So, you know, this recording's a little bit noisy just because I have so many things running into my interface right now. So ignore that. Hopefully this will all be okay when you uh, actually do yours and it's not going to be a big deal. I never, uh, actually, on this version, actually, let me check something. Well, it seems to be okay. Oh, I guess I did configure the audio latency on this. But anyway, if you, if you record something and this is not in time with your click, what you just recorded, and you know you played it on time, then you have a latency compensation uh, adjustment you need to make. In order to do that, you can watch one of my other videos where I showed you how to do that, which you can just click right here and check that out. And then that'll fix that problem. So if you see this little arrow here, that means that it has been latency corrected. And so this is on time, at least for mine. So what I'm going to do is zoom back out a little bit. Uh, let's just go, if you click this, and then if you right click, that zooms out. Now, remember before when I made this little uh, grid up here, 
that's going to come in useful right now because what I'm going to do is actually select part of this baseline, not all of it. I don't know. Let's go to like right there. Let's make sure that this is on the grid. If you see that yellow line, that means that it's on the grid. Now, if you hold down the shift key, shift key, I think is it shift? Yeah, hold down the shift key, and then press play. And that actually loops it, but I, I didn't quite get a correct loop there. So let's go a, a little bit further and listen to that again. Hold down shift. You can press space too. Okay. So looped, that sounds, you know, pretty good. I'm not saying it's great, <laughs> but it's good enough for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and copy that. So in order to do that, all you have to do is just hold down control on your keyboard and press the letter C. Now let's go to the next point after this first measure and this control and V, and that will paste the new, uh, basically a copy of that baseline to the next measure. Now, if we just click the right, or sorry, press the right arrow on the keyboard. Actually, before we do that, let's delete all this extra stuff over here. So let's click on that uh, measure right at the end and delete this. Uh, somehow I just deleted everything. Let's not do that. All right, I need to listen to this again. I lost my spot. Okay, let's just delete everything after that first uh, measure. Now let's try this again. Let's just highlight this whole area. Make sure you have the yellow snapping indicators on both ends. Copy it. Control C. If you press the right arrow key on your keyboard, it will automatically go to the end of that wave. And now you can just do Control V. Repeat. Control V. Control V. Okay. So that got us to the end of our click. Let's go ahead and save. And let's just listen to that back. So that's good enough. Um, now, since I don't have many instruments here in my actual apartment, most of them are at my uh, studio. But what I do have is this little frog-shaped wood block. So I'm going to use this as percussion uh, to put over that bass line. So let's go ahead and rewind back to the beginning. And then with Audacity, you don't need to actually make a second track. Every time you hit record, it'll just automatically create a new track for you. So let's go ahead and hit record. Okay, that should be enough of that. Let's go ahead and listen back to that first part. Now 
let's delete our extra stuff there. And then let's highlight this first section, basically the same way we did the base. So we're just creating loops. Now, of course, you don't have to do it this in loops. I'm just doing this, you know, to show you that you can do this. Um, if you are a more competent musician or if you just want to, uh, you know, play something more natural, you can just go through and just play all the way through to the end of the song. Obviously, I don't really have to say that. So let's copy this, paste it just like we did before. Oops, went too far. That's all right. Save it again. Control S saves, by the way. Go back to the beginning. Now, just so you can uh, hear what this sounds like without the click, let's just go ahead and mute those for a second. Ah, uh, unfortunately, the way I have my um, setup uh, configured here uh, to record the um, mic for the screen capture software it's basically always going to be recording so even the click when I play it back it's being re-recorded onto the other tracks which I didn't realize that before I started uh, making this tutorial so you're just basically going to be stuck with a click uh, through this whole tutorial but it doesn't really matter so that's basically it um, that shows you how to create a click how to create a grid and then how to record and then overdub other audio on top of another track. So you could do this with basically anything. You could use real drums, guitars, basses, synths, uh, whatever you have. And you could, you know, record and overdub. Now, once you are ready to uh, finish this song up, say you had a lot of tracks in there and you're ready to mix it down, um, uh, due to me using my screen capture software, it seems like the click is getting over-recorded. I recorded again on all of my other tracks. So even when I do mix this down, it's still going to have a click track in it. But for you, in order to get rid of that click track when you do your mix, just hit mute right here on your click. And then when you export these tracks, they will be, uh, you know, without a click. So before we do that, though, I just want to show you one more thing. Uh, one thing, if you do end up using a lot of tracks that will be useful, is the mixer. So if you go to View, and you go to Mixer Board, now here is basically faders. It's a very basic mixer, but if you have a lot of tracks, it still is useful to use. You can do your panning and your mutes and solos, and they're all right there, uh, easily accessible via mixer. So let's go ahead and mute our click track, and say we recorded some guitars and all kinds of stuff on there and it sounds really great all right so now let's just go ahead and export the wave go to export audio let's go ahead and put this on our desktop for the time being multi-track test is what i'll name it then you click save you can put in all of your song data there if you want then click ok now here it is so let's go ahead and give that a listen. All right, so like I said, the click track is still there on mine because of uh, it getting basically bled over into my other tracks from using my microphone for this tutorial. But if you muted your uh, click track when you were doing yours, it should be gone at this stage. So again, thanks for watching, and hopefully that helped you and will allow you to create some music and audacity. If you have any questions or anything like that, just uh, post them in the comments section. And please subscribe, check out my other videos, and thanks for watching. Have a good day.